Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer, and today we're here for yet another Civilization VI Leader Spotlight, where today we are taking a look at one of the newest leaders in the New Frontier Pass, and that is, of course, Hammurabi of Babylon, which is, I must say, one of the most insane leaders in the game, because of the fact that not only do you get discounts from your Eurekas, you just get the full text, but we'll talk about that more in just a little bit. And speaking of discounts, let's go ahead and talk about today's video sponsor, which is, once again, Extra Wallets. So they have a ton of discounts going on right now for Black Friday. They've got 30% off any order and you get an additional 5% off if you use my discount link in the video description below of which of course that supports the channel as well. So if you've never heard of Extra Wallets, they sell really high quality premium leather wallets that also have RFID blocking cases to keep your cards safe. This time they sent me over the limited edition Vichetta Parliament wallet, which is very nice. I really like the color on this one. I think it's got some really cool colors. And as I mentioned, it is limited edition. There's, they're only making 300 of them. So if you would like to pick one up, you know, now is going to be the time. These wallets as well, you can get these really cool solar powered tracking cards that you can use to slide into your wallet and then track your uh, wallet from anywhere in the world using your phone. And in addition to that, they also now have these for keys as well. So it's just a little card that goes on your key ring. And same deal, you can track both your wallet and your keys from anywhere in the world on your phone. You can live stress free without the worry of losing all of your important cards or keys because you can track them at any time. These wallets and accessories will make for a great gift this holiday season, and I personally am even going to be giving some of them to my friends and family this Christmas, so if you're trying to think of holiday gift ideas, then I highly recommend you check them out, and they've even got a really great holiday gift bundle with a card holder and all the accessories nicely together at a heavily discounted price. So, once again, Extra Wallets, link is in the description below. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what Babylon has to offer. So their first ability is known as Ninu Ilu Serum, and it makes it so that when each specialty district type, except for the government plaza, is constructed for the first time, you will receive the lowest production cost building that can currently be constructed in that district for free, and for the other non-specialty districts or the government plaza, you will instead receive an envoy whenever you complete one of those districts for the first time. So this ability I was a little bit hard on whenever I was doing my first impressions of Babylon, but my my impressions of it now have improved a little bit, so I think that this is a decent ability. The amount of production that you save is actually quite substantial if you build a lot of different specialty district types, so one thing that I would advise uh, in order for you to make use of this ability is to build at least one of each type of specialty district, because if you're not doing that, you're really not making use of part of Babylon's kit, so this ability then kind of goes to waste, because if you build like eight campuses in no other districts, then you're really only going to get the value of one free library out of it. So this ability, it's not like an insanely strong ability. It's not game breaking or anything, but it's not bad either. So it's probably in like, you know, the, the B tier of abilities. So still very worthwhile for you to make use of it. And I highly suggest that you do. And speaking of game-breaking abilities, let's now go ahead and look at Enuma Anu Enlil, which makes it so that your Eurekas will provide all of the science for the technologies, and instead, as a trade-off for this, you lose 50% science per turn. So this ability is just extremely broken. It is, however, one of the most fun abilities in the game to use, in my opinion, so I don't really want to complain about it too much, because I love how it works. It's so fun to just try to figure out new ways to make this ability work for you in a given game. Uh, so the thing that I've been doing on streams lately, which, if you don't watch the streams, twitch.tv slash saxygamer, you should go follow. Um, but what I've been doing on streams is doing a musketman rush, and you can get musketman by about turn 70, when people have either still warriors or swordsmen and then you can just absolutely demolish them with it. So the reason why this ability is so broken is because it makes it so that the techs don't have prerequisites if you get the Eurekas. So in order to get the Musketman, all that you really have to do is research mining, and then you just have to fulfill the Eurekas for the other techs. So then you can build a quarry, which gets you masonry. You can build ancient walls, which gets you, I don't know, whatever the tech is that gets, I think it's engineering, that gets you aqueducts. You can build an aqueduct, that gets you the tech that allows you to reveal niter and build an armory. You build one armory, and that gets you the tech for musketmen, so that you've just got musketmen at like turn 60 or 70, and you could just go steamroll someone. There's plenty of other pathways that you can use. There's a way you can rush, I believe it's piken shots. There's a way you can rush crossbowmen, you can rush bombards. It's so insane as a domination ability that you are pretty much guaranteed to steamroll at least your nearest neighbor, if not even more than that. You can also use this to rush for wonders, so I know one of the things that the game mechanic has been doing is rushing Roar Valley with this, which then allows you to get biplanes really fast as well, so 
As I mentioned, there are so many insanely strong things that you can rush by using this ability, and it's really fun. The one thing, the one caveat with it though, is that if you're not really experienced with the game, you don't really know the tech tree that well, you don't know the Eurekas that well, then this can be a little bit hard, but there's already so many like very, very descriptive plans of things that you can do that it's very easy to use this ability uh, effectively if you've even got a little bit of experience with the game. So Enuma Anu Enlil, probably one of the single most broken abilities in the entire game. Alright, now let's go ahead and talk about the unique unit and building for Babylon. I'm going to try to go through these a little bit faster since I just ranted and raved for a while about their abilities. So, their unique unit is known as the Sabum Kibitum, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is an Ancient Era unique melee unit, so it doesn't replace anything. Uh, it's got lower production than both Warriors and Spearmen, and that's relevant because it's comparable to both Warriors and Spearmen. So, it has a melee strength of 17, which is 3 less than the Warrior, which is a little bit disappointing. But it does have 3 movement, which is 1 more, and 3 sight range, which is also 1 more. It also, since it's a melee unit, it gets 10 combat strength against anti-cav units. And also, the unique ability of it is that it gets 17 strength against cavalry units. So, where does this make it sit? So, against warriors, this is a bad unit. Because you're just going to have straight up less combat strength. Against Spearmen, it is slightly better because you are going to have, uh, you'll have 27 combat strength compared to their 25. And against Cavalry units, it's pretty comparable to a Spearman because Spearmen normally get 35 combat strength against Cavalry. This one's going to get 34. So it's kind of like a nice hybrid between a Spearman and a Warrior and a Scout as well because you also get that additional movement and sight range. So these are decent to make use of. I honestly don't think early, early, early war is that valuable on Babylon, so I don't really build these that much, but either way, it's an okay unique unit, but not outstanding. Babylon's unique building is the Palgum, which replaces the Watermill, but unlocks at a different text. So this one unlocks with Irrigation. It's going to give you plus two production, which is one more than a Watermill, plus one housing, which is one more than a Watermill, it's not going to give you one food that a water mill does, but instead you get one food to all tiles that are adjacent to fresh water in the city, so that would be things that are adjacent to rivers or lakes. Palgum as well, I don't think it's outstanding, but it's also still at least decent if you're trying to grow up your population in cities. So obviously you have to be adjacent to a river to build this, so you're going to have at least some tiles to get that extra food. Um, this can be a decent way to get a few extra food in a city, and in some cases I think it is fairly worthwhile, especially if you're on floodplains. So Falgum, as I mentioned once again, not really insanely strong, but, you know, pretty decent. Now let's go ahead and talk about the strengths and weaknesses of Hammurabi and Babylon in the New Frontier Pass. So for their strength, I'm really only going to list one here because it stands out so heavily amongst their other strengths, and that is the insane ability to beeline text. So as I mentioned, there's so many ways that you can use this well. You can rush musketmen, you can rush piken shots, you can rush biplanes, you can rush wonders, you can rush crossbowmen. So many things that you can do with this to just get techs way before anybody else in the game has them. So for that reason, you can be at such a power spike. Like, as I mentioned in a lot of videos, utilizing power spikes is one of the best ways to, you know, kind of get good at Civ. And when you play Babylon, you get bigger power spikes than anybody else in the entire game ever will be able to get pretty much. So for that reason, uh, you can make use of that to an insane amount and just dominate people that are around you. So for easily the best strength, and I'm not even going to list any other ones because the other strengths of Babylon, you know, they have a decent unique unit, decent building, but none of that really matters just because of the fact that this ability is so insane. As far as their weaknesses though, for one, as I mentioned, they are harder for inexperienced players, you know, for people that aren't going to be like watching that many guides or anything like that to find out what the, the beeline techs are, or you know, they're not paying that much attention to the tech tree, then this sieve is going to really kind of suck because you're going to lose that 50% science per turn. And speaking of the 50% science per turn loss, this does become a problem a little bit into the later eras of the game, specifically like the information era, where the only way to get techs is to um, really get Eurekas from great scientists or spies. So unless you get really lucky and you get like the great scientist that gives you the Eureka for all the information era techs, might take you a little bit to slog out some of those because of that science penalty. So later on in the game, you can have struggles, but as I mentioned though, it's not always the case because if you're able to get good great scientists, then you're really going to be fine. Let's now go ahead and give Babylon their tier ranking. So if you're new to the series, all that you need to know here is that these go on the traditional S to F scale with S being the highest. So S, A, B, C, D, and F. So 
For their domination ranking, this one is a no-brainer. I think that they deserve an S. This is like S++++++ plus 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 because they are... I don't know. I'm tempted to say that they are the best domination sim in the game. I don't want to quite fully commit to that just yet, but they are easily in like the top two or three for best domination sims in the game, simply because of, as I've mentioned like 12 times already, the power spikes that you get from being able to beeline tech. So having musketmen fighting against warriors, obviously you're going to win. It doesn't matter how good or bad you are at the game. If you just have that much of a unit advantage, you're just going to steamroll people. So for that reason, I think they easily deserve an S in domination. There's so many advanced military units that you can get to that throughout most of the game, you can just destroy people to the point where as you get later into the game, where I mentioned that science issue, it doesn't even matter because you own half of the world. So you have way more campuses and things than everybody else. So domination easily S tier. For their science ranking, I think that they deserve an A. They are still a very good science sieve. Um, I think that if you're going to play them science, you still have to go domination and science for pretty much no matter what victory type you go for these guys. I would say that you need to go at least partially domination. Otherwise, you're just wasting part of your kit. Um, but yeah, so for science, obviously the ability to rush techs is very nice. Uh, the fact that you get uh, Eurekas from a lot of great scientists is also really nice because that pretty much translates them all into free techs. So this allows you to get really far ahead in the tech tree to get to some of the techs that you need for space victory a little bit faster. I don't know why I called it space victory, but uh, to get for the techs for science victory a little bit faster. And then from there, it's very easy. So if you get the great scientist that I mentioned that gives you the Eureka for all the information era techs, that pretty much guarantees that you're going to get to Exoplanet Expedition before just about anyone else in the game. So for science, they are not quite as good. I would still recommend using them as a domination sieve, but they are very playable as a science sieve as well, so for that reason, I think they deserve the A. For culture and religion, I think that they're going to deserve Cs. They don't really have any bonuses going for them here. You could maybe argue that for culture, they could deserve like a B or something, just because getting text allows you to get wonders faster, so you can beeline important wonders like Eiffel Tower. Uh, you can't rush Christo, though, because it doesn't work for inspirations as well. So um, either way, though, they really don't have any significant bonuses, so they're really just kind of average in terms of culture and religion and deserving of a C in both. For diplomacy, though, I think that I'm going to give them a D. I would not recommend playing them as a diplomatic sieve because, as I mentioned, domination is so good on them that no matter what victory type you go, you should be attacking at least your nearest neighbor, if not more than that, because the power spikes that you get just consistently throughout the game make it so insane that you can just uh, get a lot of land, take over a lot of people, but that is going to mean that a lot of people hate you and you're going to be losing a lot of diplomatic favor per turn. So for those reasons, I think that they deserve a D. I mean, sure, you could just ignore domination and play diplomacy, but you're wasting one of the biggest strengths of Babylon if you do that. And for their overall ranking, you know, whenever I did the first impression, I say that they, I said that they would be somewhere between D and A, but I was totally wrong. They definitely deserve an S. This is, as I've said like 10 million times already, this is easily one of the best civs in the game with one of the most broken abilities in the game by being able to beeline text so hard. So... This is also really one of the most fun sieves in the game, in my opinion, as well, just because, as I mentioned, there's so many different ways that you can play them by utilizing this ability that I don't think there's, like, a single clear-cut way, and I don't think I've even found all of the all of the good ways to play them. So there's a lot of variability, a lot of really cool and fun things that you can do and discover on them, so if you haven't played Babylon yet, I 100% recommend that you check them out because they are both extremely good and extremely fun. So thank you everyone for watching. I have been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for some more Civilization 6 content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.